All right, everyone, people are still up in a tizzy on uh, Twitter because of, uh, oh, my account got unverified. Well, uh, saying it this way, you shouldn't care. Uh, because what does verification mean other than, hey, you know, you're, you're PC and family friendly and you don't step out of line. In other words, eh, you're boring. I, I hate to say this, but if verification is going to be moved, hear me out, from primarily related to, hey, we are verifying that you represent the brand that you claim to represent, or you are a public figure of some notoriety for, you know, you're a, a best-selling author, you're a celebrity, you're a, you're a famous musician or something. That's what verification originally meant. It had nothing to do with your particular views. It had to do with, hey, I can verify, you know, by this site and that site that I run, and here's my ID and all sorts of other things. I am who I say I am, and I'm, I'm you know, uh, my notoriety is high enough for you to justify considering me a, a potential candidate for verification. Now they're moving to a system, it seems, where verification no longer has anything to do with verifying your actual identity, like, you know, they're cutting off you know, Purposeful Wife and Alsup and, you know, some of these others, kicking others off the platform. I think they de-verified Richard Spencer's He's in front page news fairly regularly. You don't have to like the dude or enjoy his views to realize, yes, this is actually his account. Um, they're moving to a system where it represents something moral instead. It represents that you are part of the political and social spectrum that Twitter wishes to tolerate. So in other words, it, it doesn't care to make sure that the fans of somebody who's more on the, the so-called fringe, uh, that they know that it's that person. But I'll say this. Here's why I personally, like, I don't care if I'm verified or not. Uh, I did apply for it, and it didn't go through. So I'm like, eh, well, I'm not going to waste my time doing this over and over. There's probably a reason for the rejection there. And I'm, I assure you it has nothing to do with, you know, I can't actually verify this is who I am, since, you know, it's linked on every other account that I run. H here's the thing. They're moving it to that system, number one. So chances are, you know, if you have out there views, if you ever step out of line and you want to challenge the status quo, you're going to get unverified anyway. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun. Number two, if you're so disconnected with your fans that they're incapable of understanding that it's your account, like, you're, you're like you haven't linked it el elsewhere, you haven't talked about the fact that it's your account, blah, 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 uh, that doesn't say good things about your message. It's like I see some of these people that were recently unverified. They're like, oh, well, you know, and, and Twitter doesn't want me to, to know my fans to know it's really me. Your fans will know because you're probably, they're probably, most of them are already there, so they're aware of it. Like I've got 20, however many thousand people on my Twitter. They know that it's actually me. They know that it's me because it's, the link is on my YouTube videos. It's on my VidMe posts. It's on my blog. It's basically everywhere. I don't think there's any mistaking that this is the real me on the Twitter that claims to be me. Look, there's a originally a Stix X and M or 666 on Twitter. That's not my account. That's actually fan run. And it's more, I, I think that they bought it actually. B-O-T, not B-O-U-G-H-T. Uh, I, I think that it's a bot account actually that just sort of spits out my uploads on YouTube and a, you know, a few other things occasionally. Um, but it's not me. But people know that Stick666 official is me. Like, you're all going to know that the Twitter account that I link in the description here is me for a reason. And if you're engaged with your fans and, like, they care at all, it's not like all soft support where people are like, oh, look, I said this, this YouTuber is kind of funny, you know, sometimes, and then they watch a couple videos a year or something. If you've got a more hardened fan base than that, trust me, the people that you probably care whether they know that it's you, they already know. I don't think that James Alsup, Purpose, uh, Purposeful Wife, Tommy Robinson, and these others, I don't think they're going to have any problem with it. It's like Keith Olbermann. Keith Olbermann swears and insults people constantly on his Twitter. I guess he should technically be unverified thus, even though everyone knows it's actually Keith Olbermann, because he does off-the-wall stuff on his Twitter account. Like, it couldn't, couldn't be anyone but Keith Olbermann, considering the stuff that he tweets. He, he says these things. Under their new TOS, which is primarily verification relates to whether you're a good person by Jack's standards or whether you're, uh, you're, you're guilty of wrong think, has nothing to do with your identity. Well, then I guess he should be unverified. Oh, why, why aren't these pundits being unverified? Is it because they can say things that other people can't say without getting abused on your platform? Probably. So my uh, advice to these people is just, to, you know, don't shut up. Don't change your behavior. 
Don't let them... What they're trying to do is back you into a corner. They're hoping that people... And this isn't just Twitter. This is other tech firms, too. They're hoping that people with large audiences will look at the number of supporters that they have and start to be a little bit more quiet and they won't speak their mind, you know, off of big media sites and they'll tone things down. They'll be they'll be more G-rated in order to save their audience. You don't need to be verified on Twitter to interact with your audience. They're still going to know the account is yours. Nobody else is going to be able to achieve verification in your name. They're not going to be able to verify it's actually them. It's going to be impossible for them to do it. You're the only one who can. So if they strip you of verification, they say you're never allowed to be verified again, don't worry too much about it. It's not going to make a big difference overall. In fact, what they've done is they've given you a bully pulpit now. They've given you a window of some days or weeks where you can say, well, alt tech is on the rise. I oppose censorship. Uh, Twitter is being abusive to its, you know, parts of its user base. Uh, it has completely changed what the original meaning of verification actually means. Well, then they've given you a chance to speak out when because so many people are talking about that issue, they'll find your channel. Maybe they subscribe, they follow you on Twitter and stuff. You actually gain a larger audience. And one that, because they're looking that sort of stuff up, they probably are on the anti-censorship side. They're going to agree with you. They're probably going to like some of your material. They'll probably be part of your of your more substantial audiences. And uh, there's a difference. And you can see this on like YouTube and stuff. Most of the people that subscribe to a channel only sporadically watch the material. Now, that's the truth. Then there's a smaller group, say in my case, probably a few tens of thousands that regularly watch basically all the uploads. Then there's a smaller group of a few thousand that interact with basically all that content, like in an active sense. Like not just watch most of the content and, and like it in a passive way, but also want to comment. They spread it around and stuff. Those are the people primarily you're relying upon for all of your channel's growth too. Because they're the ones spreading it around, they're the ones sharing it, putting it on some website, putting it on a Facebook page. So don't worry too much if somebody who's only watched one of your videos is not 100% aware right away that the Twitter page is yours. It's not going to make a big difference. Stop worrying too much about it. Like if I, I'm aware, if YouTube were to decide that becoming a verified channel on YouTube was was no longer going to be about, hey, you have a large enough audience and at the same time we can verify who you are. That's what it means right now. If they were to put a component in their TOS to say, we're going to unverify any account that's too edgy for the platform, I'd probably be unverified on YouTube. A lot of other major YouTubers, in fact, I'd say probably most of the major YouTubers would have PewDiePie at this point. There are enough people who believe he's got like dog whistling white supremacist views, he'd probably get unverified. And it would just be a kangaroo court. It would be like a witch trial where you're guilty until proven innocent with no chance to prove yourself innocent. Because it's all a bunch of hit pieces and roundabout illogical bullshit and people who just don't like you spreading bullshit about you. That's what it's devolved into. So yeah, if you have out there beliefs, look, if you delve into politics at all, it doesn't matter if you're on the left or on the right, there are probably a lot of people who fucking hate you. And the number of people who fucking hate you is roughly commensurate with your audience size. The larger your audience gets, the more people you have pissed off, the more flack you're going to get from at least some groups of people. So what? Hell, is that any different from how YouTube was a decade ago? No, no, it was actually worse. It was more cutthroat back then. To tell the truth, it was more vicious. Because back then, people could harass and troll one another, and it really wasn't a way to get them actually flagged off of YouTube when they were doing that. YouTube didn't care. They didn't do anything. They were too busy uh, taking down videos of somebody smoked weed or somebody was making out with their girlfriend. That's ultimately what they were focused on back then. Twitter. Has anything really changed, or is it still a goofy site? It's still goofy. Look. I had to be get, uh, dragged kicking and screaming to even using Twitter. The only thing that compelled me to get a Twitter account is the fact that the notification system on YouTube became too buggy for it to be reliable enough. I figured, hey, a lot of these uh, subscribers that I have probably use Twitter. Maybe if, if they're getting notifications from YouTube or Twitter, even if neither of them works 100%, there's a higher chance that they've been notified on whichever platform they use more. There's a better chance of it than it makes up for lost time because YouTube's notification and subscription feature has stopped working properly. 
but, but for some reason, either by design or by accident, it has stopped working for most users on the site. It has stopped working for most content creators. I'm going to get a Twitter account. And that was, uh, you know, in addition to the Facebook page I had, but Facebook, it's a dying platform. Both Facebook and Twitter are having issues, by the way. You're so worried about your, your stature on Twitter as being a, a verified user. Look, Twitter's losing money on a day-to-day -day basis. Their stock values have collapsed several times. It's obvious that they're not doing particularly well as a company, not because the fundamental premise of Twitter and its operation is a bad thing, it's just inefficient. It's partially inefficient because now they're going to be directing even more resources to harassing their own user base. That's going to be a big issue, I think. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is constantly embroiled in problems. A substantial proportion of all the accounts on Facebook aren't even real people. They're just propaganda bots. Some government, some company fields them in order to vote things up or down or make uh, shitty comments. That's half of Facebook at this point. There's a reason, there's a reason why Zuckerberg is uh, trying to be in the news as much as possible, talking about everything other than uh, the, the stock for Facebook or the user base growth. There's a reason he wants to talk about politics now. He wants to throw himself, he wants to harden a partisan base so that he can uh, prolong the life of his platform. Twitter's clearly doing the same. YouTube might do the same as well. I think it'd be very regrettable. YouTube above all else. It would be so regrettable because so much of their site's traffic relies on edgy content. It's what built the site. If you alienate that old solid user base that's like the most solid chunk of YouTube users that use it the most habitually, you know, lay waste to your own platform. I know YouTube loses money. Overall, though, Google makes a lot of money on YouTube anyway because it feeds all the other products and services. It's sort of an ego trip for them to maintain it. Mm. So it's just... Uh, don't worry too much about the blue check marks. Uh, there's a running joke now that people with blue check marks usually can't be trusted, actually, specifically because Twitter keeps uh, demoting everyone that has, you know, real views. They can, you know, they're actually independent. They're not, they're not a mainstream pundit or a mainstream politician or a mainstream celebrity, so they can't get verified. Well, those are the va those are the people that have been like in charge of things for a hundred years, like. Yeah, how wonderful things have turned out for us listening to these morons. So don't worry too much about it. That's about all. Peace out.